Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? It is yours truly, TJ Jones, the host of the State of the Saints podcast. And I have a very special guest here on the State of the Saints podcast. We have former left tackle, Super Bowl champ, Jamai Bushride in the building. What's going on, Jamai? Everything's going on my end, man. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, man, appreciate the time, man. I know you have a, a lot going on. You know, I know you celebrated a birthday last week. How was that, man? How, how was it celebrating another birthday, man? How, how did you uh, celebrate it? Did you have a good time? You know, it's a blessing to see another birthday. Um, yeah. You know, this is my second birthday I, that I've had within, let's see, the last 20 years, 20 plus years that I wasn't in some type of football environment. Whether <laughs> it's working, you know, whether it's working out or whether it was practicing. So uh, my birthdays are great. You know, anytime that you're able to see another one, uh, you, you gotta be, you gotta feel very fortunate and blessed. I was back in Virginia getting ready for my foundation events, uh, 10th golf tournament. So I was just, uh, I was staying busy that way. Okay, man. That's dope, man. But uh, no happy belated birthday to you, man. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, Appreciate you know, and also man, it's coming up on a one year anniversary that you announced your retirement from the NFL, man. So yeah. how's retirement life been for you? <laughs> Retire retirement has been, you know, it's funny you say that I just turned 36 and, uh, I, I was I was I was fortunate enough to have a, a great um, NFL run for 12 years. You know, I, I didn't think that you know I'd be able to play that long, but we did, and I had the opportunity to retire last year. So yeah, like you said, we're, we're creeping up. I'm, I think I'm days away from my first year of retirement, yeah. and it's been it's been a good transition. Um, right. You know, it, it's been good to be around the family right now, especially with everything that's going on. Uh, with this pandemic, I've been able to, you know, my kids are in school virtually, so right. I've been able to have a, have a hand in that. And um, right. like I stated earlier, I've been working hard to uh, get this foundation event up and going. And it was our best event that we've ever had amid everything that's going on. You know, golf is like the one, uh, I guess you could say, socially distant sport that's right, right. Not, not bad to, you know, host an event for. So we were able to do it. We were able to do it in a safe way. So... I, 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 my my wife is here. My kids are here. I'm I'm healthy. You know, I right. feel good. I feel yeah, good. Yeah, that's good, man. And uh, you know, we do miss you in the Who That Nation, man. You know, you brought a lot of joy uh to the New Orleans Saints, man. Playing a left tackle position, you yeah. know, in my opinion, you know, arguably the greatest left tackle ever played in in, in front of New Orleans Saints. I mean, that just I'll, I, I'll, I, hey, I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I appreciate that. But I appreciate that. But this dude, this dude, Teron, is, is making some noise, man. I'm I'm right. I'm, I'm when you know when i did leave to go to chicago i did see his growth and to see where right. he is now it's yeah. pretty cool i appreciate you saying that right uh, but yeah hopefully these boys can uh get it together to bring bring another championship to the city yeah man no doubt about it uh yeah but i, I do want to ask you man you know there's a lot of things going on right now you talked about the pandemic but there's uh some issues that are going on man especially when it comes to social justice uh you got the black lives matter movement going on and uh we know about uh the nba um actually uh deciding to not play, um, led by the Milwaukee Bucks. They were supposed to play a playoff game yesterday, and they decided to uh, not play due to the uh, the shooting of uh, of, a, of Jacob Blake. And uh, I just want to get your take about that, man. How do you feel about, uh, you know, all this stuff that's going on right now, uh, the, the shooting of uh, Jacob Blake? I mean, just one of, of so many, several that have taken place at the hands of law enforcement. It's, it's, it's another very unfortunate event. I think the good thing about the pandemic was the fact that we were able to, everybody was able to slow life down and you were able to see why some people felt the way that they felt. You right. know, the pandemic was very hard on us you know, in the United States and all over the world, but it was an eye opener right. to, you know, not to me, but to a lot of people who needed that, that pat on the back or that little, you know, kick in the rear to understand like, hey, this is the reason that these guys have been protesting. Right. And, and, and it showed, and, and, and it reared its ugly head again in Kenosha, Wisconsin. You know, now when I was yeah. playing for the Bears, I lived 30 minutes from Kenosha. So I know exactly, I know wow. exactly where it is. I've rode through there before. I've wow. actually had a friend or two from that area. I might be losing you. I'm sorry. Did I lose you? No, no, no. I can hear you. I can hear you clear, loud and clear, man. <laughs> All right, yeah, we're good. I, I got you back on here. But, um, okay. It's just unfortunate, man. It, 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 yeah. it is. It's terrible to see um, to see someone who 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 looks like me on camera again 
right? You know, thank goodness this man is still alive. Right. But the fact, it, it's, it's a trickle down effect, right? right? So the shooting happens, the incident happens and everybody in, in the community sees it. Now their their judgment of police are, is a little bit skewed now, right? right. You know, right. the kids see it. Right. They're, they're messed up. It, it's gonna be, it's, it's a big deal when these type of things happen. It affects a lot of people. Right. I'm I'm just hoping the powers that be do the right thing. They do yeah. the right thing. They come together. But the one thing that I've been really happy to see is is the response of, especially the NBA because they did right. get it jump started. They canceled all three playoff games. Uh, that hit you in the pockets. In the NFL, right. uh, a lot of the teams started to do, you know, kind of follow suit. They right. canceled practice and. And, 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 and people, that makes people aware, you know, when everybody's right. together, the thing that happened with Kaepernick earlier is that, you know, he made the ultimate sacrifice, right? Right, but right. He was, he was, he wasn't alone, but it was just a few people with him. Now it's, he, he got the conversation started, you know, yeah. the conversation started and now everybody sees him, now everybody's alone, but, you know, he was the one who kicked it off. So people are taking notice whether you want to or not. And you're yeah. having a lot more uncomfortable conversations with people and, I think it's necessary. I think it's necessary not just for people who aren't black, but it's, it's necessary for people who are black as well to have these uncomfortable conversations with people right. moving forward, just so you can, you know, bring yourself into 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 our mindset at times, and so yeah. we can so we can have good conversations and and bounce things up off of people and 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 just you know open up your hearts and your minds to other people's feelings. Yeah, um, I, I talked about that earlier on the podcast I did. I said, we got to have these uncomfortable conversations in mind. I mean, the fact is, uh, you know, we don't want to have these conversations, but they're necessary in order for us to create true change. And um, I, I find myself thinking about that more because, I mean, I have a one-year-old son. And, you know, I think about when he starts to get older, I'm going to have to have a conversation with him that there's going to be people in this world that's they're just not going to like you, not on off anything you did to them personally. But just the way that you look and, and also just to make sure that, you know, tell him all the things he needs to do uh, when he possibly can come into the hands of, of a possible law enforcement official. So, I mean, it all it, starts at home, you know, yeah. it, it all starts a, a, about that, about that, you know, the knowledge that you get from from where you lay your head. It, it all starts there because it's funny you said that you have a one year old child. I had to bring it up last night at dinner because I told my you know I was having a conversation with a family member and mm. and we was like man it's crazy you know it's crazy how the NBA they, they came together and they canceled all the games and my son said well why'd they cancel all the games so mm. I had to I had to break that down a little bit you yeah. know good and bad people there's more good than bad but you gotta understand we gotta find a way to get out of bad situations because we gotta you know it's just a live and learn that's what I try to tell them. Yeah. Do you find yourself like uh, being a little bit more like um, I say afraid? I mean, be the fact that you you are a former athlete. I mean, you play at a high level. Um, do you ever like find yourself like really uh, just thinking about, man, um, I have a son, you know, he's going to be out here in this world and people are going to be judging him and they're not going to know who his father is or anything like that. That background. Do you do you find yourself thinking about those type of situations? For sure. You know, I, and I think about how my parents would drop gems uh, or, or kind of school me on how to act, um, you know, when I do have uh, these encounters with, with law enforcement or people in power. It's, it's about how you carry yourself. And sometimes it's about things might be able to, it might get a little heated or might get a little escalated, but figure out what's really going on and find a way to get yourself back to where you need to be. You yeah. know, don't don't take a situation to a place where you don't want it to go, right. where you don't know where it can go. Right. I, I, to me, I, I want to find a way to get myself home. Yeah, you know, and, and I understand that emotions can take over, but uh, as men, um, and being black, and you know, being a black man in America, you have to understand how to control those emotions at times, and then figure out a way to uh, get your best possible outcome afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. I think the most important thing is making sure that you're getting home and make sure you're like you, you're doing the right things. Uh, let's go ahead and um, let's talk a little bit about the NFL. Let's talk about uh, the New Orleans Saints. Yeah. Uh, as you know, training camp is uh, taking place right now. Uh, you know, this is the uh, the time where people are vying for uh, roster positions. 
Uh, let's go ahead and start with the offensive line because this has been a hot topic for the New Orleans Saints. You have uh, Eric McCoy, who's a, the center. He played last season, and the Saints drafted Cesar Ruiz, the rookie out of Michigan. Uh, mm-hmm. Our question is to you is uh, how hard is it for, uh, I guess, a, a young player to come in and, and play that center position? And can you see Cesar Ruiz uh, being able to uh, to do it? I think it can, but I also think it also has a lot to do with the type of individual you're drafting, Mm -hmm. the type of coaches, you know, that he's learning from. And to be honest with you, the type of players that he has in the locker room. Mm -hmm. Now, the New Orleans Saints, is it's an organization where they will they will mold you, but they will bring you along just because of the type of people that they have, their leadership. Right. You know, their leadership trickles down, you know, so you see how the coaches interact with the rest of the coaches and it kind of just trickles into the players. You know, right. you're going to have players on that line that are going to be counting on the young rookie to come in there and make some kind of impact. They drafted right. him high for a reason. What did Sean say? You know, we're not drafting you first in the first round for you to sit. Right. No, he's coming in to make an impact. And the guys that he has there with him, you know, Teron, you know, Big Pete, Ramchek. They're going to bring them. They're going to all bring them along. They're going to bring them along, and they'll help them with the mental part of the game, the emotional part of the game. Uh, but physically, you know, he's going to have to uh, not really say mature because he's played at a high level in, right. you know, in the division that he played out of college. Mm-hmm. But you know, the, these guys are different, and right. there's going to be mistakes that are that are to be made. But the good players, the smart players, learn from all those mistakes and they don't let it happen again or don't let it happen again over and over and over. Uh, I feel good about the situation. I've heard nothing but great things about them. And the one great thing about the Saints scouting department, they do a really, really good job of making sure they're bringing the correct people in there. Yeah, absolutely. I I always talk about Jeff Ireland here on the show. I mean, he does an outstanding job, him and his scout team, uh, making sure that they they get gems out of that draft, man. Uh, No doubt Mm -hmm. about that. Uh, You mentioned earlier, um, left tackle to Ryan Armstead. Now, when you uh, left the New Orleans Saints and went to the to Bears, there was a, a, a gap in between years before Terrain uh, came there. What can you say about Terrain Armstead that makes him arguably the best left tackle in football? I just think it's the, it's the work that he's been putting in, his knowledge of the game. Um, I see the, and, 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 you know, what, one great thing that Terrain does that I see is that he really invests in those young guys. So that's when I say bringing in a young guy to be counted on right now, you probably ended up in one of the better locker rooms for that because you have guys who are going to take you under their wing and they're going to bring you along with them. And you're going to compete at a high level because I don't know if you know, but that I know, you know, but that defensive line, they're Mm -hmm. coming. They're good. They're they're going to beat you, Mm -hmm. but then they'll also help you because that's the correct thing to do. You know, you want to, teach people and you want to, you know, put people in the right position that, you know, we can all be successful, but he's in a good room. And Teron is somebody who has taken care of, of his body over the last few years, um, you know, just off of conversations and what I've seen, he's doing a good job of, of making sure his body's right. His body's ready to go on game day. Um, right. When he's out there, he plays at a high level. He practices yeah. at a high level. Um, and when he's not on the field, um, it's it's noticeable, you know, because he's a, he's a good player. You know, he's a good player that holds his own, and and he's had uh, two two tremendous years back to back. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm just looking to see how he continues to grow uh, as as a professional athlete and, and see where his game can elevate to. Yeah. And and lastly, uh, let's talk about Ryan Ramchick. This, this guy to me, uh, Jermaine, is one of the most underrated players. Not not just at a position. I'm talking about just players in general in the NFL. Uh, what have you seen um, uh, playing with Ryan Ramchick, and uh, what makes him a- as dominant as he is at right tackle? He's consistent. He's strong. He's smart. He's consistent. That's what you want out of a professional athlete, you know, yeah. strong, smart, consistent individuals, and he's tough. You know, he's played, he's played through injuries. He's dealt with things, and he's always got the job done. Every mm-hmm. time, you know, you, you don't have to work like the thing. You don't have to worry about him. Right. You know, it doesn't matter who you put over there, J.J. Watt or, or any other outside linebacker or successful DN. Uh, he's going to go out there. He's going to do his job. You said it. You hit the nail right on the head earlier. Right. He's uh, very underappreciated. Now, I don't know if he's underappreciated, but 
He's appreciated definitely on that team. And yeah, yeah. Out. But when it comes to the Pro Bowl nods and all that good stuff mm -hmm. and the extra money that he should be lining his pockets with, he's right. not getting that nod. Right. And, you know, right tackle isn't like the, the sexiest position, but he mm -hmm. really – he really does his job really at a high level, day in, day out, practicing and practice out. Uh, I have nothing but respect. I'm, I'm glad I had the opportunity to play with you know those set, that that set of bookends. Yeah, man. I, I mean, they're they're awesome, man. Uh, left tackle, right tackle. The Saints are definitely solidified at, at those positions. Um, uh, let me uh, ask you. I, I gotta uh, say this. I gotta ask you this question. Back back in 2018, yeah. the NFC Championship game, man. Like. Tell, take me back to that particular game and and what happened like at that moment when the referee did not uh, throw that flag for that pass interference. Like, what was the what was the emotion on the sidelines and how was the the emotions after the game? The emotions on the sidelines were the same exact emotion that you guys were feeling, whether you're watching the game or you were in the stadium. Um, probably on the field, it was a lot more anger, you know. Than anything, it was of course it was disbelief because you know how do you, you know, have the audacity not to not to call that you know what I'm saying so you know how do you have the audacity not to call that and I'll be honest with you I, I think those I think those refs knew that they knew they made a mistake because you know I've I played for 12 years I played in close to 150 games you know so I've right, I've right. had my my uh, I guess you could say interactions with the refs and most of them aren't really that um, pleasant. Uh, I, I really, I really let the guy who failed to throw that flag. I let him hear about it. Yeah. I let him hear about it when I walked on the field for the field goal. When I walked off the field, yeah. because you know we worked so hard, right? We worked so hard to get to the last game of the season, and you don't right. get that opportunity. Mm -hmm. it, it sucks. It sucks because one, it was it was my last game, so selfishly, it sucks for that reason. Man. But it, it sucks because. I'm very invested, like in, in the city of New Orleans. You know, my wife's from New Orleans. My my right. my first and my third child was born in New Orleans. So, right. um, you know, we won a Super Bowl there. It's close to my heart, and I I, right. I really wanted to go out. Uh, you know, the, the storybook ending. You know, at, you know, you want to go out. You want to go right. out. Uh, <laughs> you know, to have to have. You know, you know what I'm saying. Like, you want to have that chance to do that. Right. But, you know, not every story is going to be written the way that you want it to. And right. So, yeah, you know, just like Coach Payton said, I remember in the interview, you said he, like, laid up in the house for, like, three days eating ice cream, you know, like, a, <laughs> like, like, like a, you know, like you're getting over a, a breakup or something like that. Right, That's how right. it felt. Like, right. I don't think I left my room for, like, two, three straight days, like, straight Whoa. days. Wow. You know, like, we're just right. – it was tough. It was tough to deal with, but then – um you know that year I lost a daughter, you know, so yeah, yeah. I, I kind of perspective was something in my mind that uh, always stuck out anytime a situation like this would happen. You know, it's, it's obviously right. tough, but like, I'm still here. I still have my health. It's going to burn. But like you were saying, like, of course, we want that that ending. Uh, but this 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 story just took one of the wildest turns ever, you know, right. and they ended up going to the Super Bowl and not doing anything so right. probably the more frustrating part of something, you know? yeah i mean I, I didn't even watch the super bowl that's like the first time like i can think in my natural existence that i i, I didn't watch the super bowl i, I mean okay, I, I, I'll put it this, I, i'll put it this way uh, <laughs> i was definitely i was walking the streets of the because i was living in the city that time so i was right. walking the streets of the boycott mm -hmm. bowl and, mm -hmm. and we pulled up uh to some restaurant um over by harris i don't know okay and, and me and my me and my lady just watched we watched because everybody was playing the rerun of uh, of our Super Bowl. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So we watched a little bit of that, and I watched like the like the, the end of the fourth quarter, like the middle of the fourth quarter of it. And I was just, I'm just glad they lost because you know <laughs> that was that was the that yeah. was the petty, that was me, the petty side of me. Yeah, hey, hey, I'm I'm just as petty as you because I was glad they <laughs> lost too. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean you, but you mentioned the Super Bowl. Uh, you know, you guys won the Super Bowl back in 2009. You you uh, were a part of that team. Um, and you also were a part of the team, like you say, it was one game away from going back to the Super Bowl. Um, I want to ask you about the the coach, the coach Sean Payton and Drew Brees. Now you came into the league in 2007. It was probably the, yeah, it was Drew Brees going like his second year as the Saints quarterback. 
Yeah. Have you seen a difference between Sean Payton and Drew Brees from the time you first got there until the time you retired? Did you have you seen a difference? In the relationship, their relationship was pretty much the same. You know, I, I I believe their routine has kind of always been the same for all those years. You know, Drew is the he, he's the cliche. You know, first guy in, last guy out of the building deal. Like that's him. He's in the meetings with the coaches. A lot of those meetings, he. You know, he, his attention to detail and his focus is really top notch. It's right. uh, it's it's when you get into a locker room like that, it's uh, or when you play with a guy like that, when you play with an organization that puts so much thought and so much um, preparation into a game plan, you have to look right. at yourself and make sure that you're doing everything in your power to be at your at your best because right. you see what your leaders are doing. You see you know, what the coaching staff is doing. You see what the other players are doing. I don't want to let these guys down. And it's like you you, you take your, your preparation and um, mm-hmm. how hard you work, you ramp it up to the next level. And that's right. just what they do. Their, their relationship, you know, they, they probably have a relationship where they can kind of finish, you, finish each other's sentences type of deal when it comes to football because they, they're always on the same page, right? right. When it's third right. and short in the red zone, you know, Sean and Drew think of probably the same – two, three plays that, you know, that, or, or, or they probably have one best play that they, that they think about, you know, they have that type of relationship where you can see them going back and forth, you yeah. know, and, and, and collaborating and fixing things. And, and that's what I really think it takes to have a successful organization, you know, yeah, having true. people who go back and forth, who have understanding and just trying to find a way to get the job done, honestly. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as, as a Saints fan my entire life, uh, Jamai, I was born and raised in New Orleans. And um, it's just been fun watching Sean Payton and Drew Brees over these past 15 years, you know, uh, yeah. change the narrative of Saints football, man. I mean, the Saints weren't the Saints that we know and love today when I was growing up, you know, like you, you used to have them starter jackets back in the 90s, you know what I'm saying? Like you wear a Saints jacket yeah. out in the street, like mm, they talk about you. <laughs> If you if you ain't have a 49 uh uh cowboy start on, man, they look at you like you're funny, man. You had that Saints on. But I mean, you guys have like you also, man, you you help change the narrative of Saints football. Uh final question for you. What are you looking uh, uh forward to uh this Saints season? What are you looking at? What players do you have your eyes on? Um, all the players that was there um previously, I, it was a good team. It was a it was yeah. a good solid team, to be honest with yeah. you. They just yeah. uh came up short uh in the playoffs which was which which was it sucked to be honest with you i, I was Man. actually at that game in the stands mm. Uh, mm. and i felt that feeling that uh you know the fans go through you know i i, I seen it i felt it you know but what i'm really looking at is 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 jared cook how he continues to yeah, yeah. To get on the same page with drew and now you've got a guy in emmanuel sanders that's going to free up cook you're going to free up mt a little bit and guess what now we got a healthy uh, AK Alvin Kamara, yep, um, yep. it's going to be dangerous. You know, it, it's mm. truly going to be dangerous. Latavius Murray, Traquan Smith is going into what his third year. Yeah, uh, he's going to continue to grow because he sees Mike, and you yep. see Emmanuel Sanders. That's two alpha dogs you got in that in that wide yep. receiver room. You know, this is an opportunity for Traquan to uh, make a name for himself because right. there's going to be certain defense that try to limit Mike, but obviously. You, can't guard him, you know. He, it's it's in his social media handle. You really can't right. guard him. No, no, you, you can't. You can't, man. You can't guard him. <laughs> and, now, and, now, and now you got Emmanuel Sanders. You got Jared Cook. I mean, they yeah. got everything in place. Yep. On the defensive side of the ball, I'm I'm excited. Uh, the D line has been a huge part. D A yep. D A has been doing his thing with the whole defense. The defensive line and the linebacking core, uh, they're special. Demario is. He's in the same category as Ryan Ramchek. Nice. Top three in his position in the league doesn't get the Pro Bowl, doesn't get the extra funds from getting nominated for the Pro Bowl like yeah. he should. Um, snug, straight snug. <laughs> straight up. Straight up. I'm, 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 I'm excited to see what Davenport does. You know, I'm excited mm-hmm. to see how he continues to mature, become a stronger player, a better player on the edge, complimenting uh, yeah. Cam Jordan, you know, because – Consistent. Yeah. Cam is smart, yeah. consistent, and he's rel- like he's reliable. He's always mm-hmm. there. Um, yeah. You got to be excited about it. You truly got to be excited about the season. And and look on the back end. You bring Malcolm back. 
Man. You know, you got Janoris Jenkins and you got Swearinger, P. Rob. I mean, come on, bro. Like on paper, yeah. yeah. On paper, these dudes might, I mean, shit, they might not lose a game. That's how, <laughs> that's how good they could be. You know, look, I'm, 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 all, I'm always, I'm always going to be, I'm always going to be, uh, I'm going to wrap them high, man. Even on my, even man. on my podcast, The Bush and Me Show, mm -hmm. I don't ever bet, I don't ever bet against them. You know, feel me? Yeah. I'm never going to bet against them. Yeah, man. Uh, I, hey, I'm looking forward to this season. I think uh, this is going to be a really uh, good season. I think that they uh, they addressed a lot of the the the, the holes that they had. And, yeah. and you talk about Traquan Smith too. You know, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how he's going to be playing on the outside. I think that might that might help him out tremendously. You know, Tegan Junior went out there to Chicago, and I think they're probably going to slide him to the outside. He might be able to do a little bit more damage there as well. I mean, like you said, an embarrassment of riches the New Orleans Saints have. Uh, but, Jemai, thank you very much for being a part of the State of the Saints podcast. Uh, before um, I let you go, I want to um, ask you uh, to let everybody know about your podcast and how they can reach you. Yeah, my my podcast is uh, Bush and Me Show, Me with two E's, M-E-E -E Show. You can hit me on Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, we're going to start getting it back going here in the next week. Uh, we're just going to tighten up our social media stuff a little bit, and then we're going to kind of hit the ground running once these games start back so we can um, start to break down. I'm going to be talking a lot about the O and D line because that's what I know. That's what I yeah. enjoy talking about. My right. co-host, me, uh, he gets into the gambling side of sports. So, you know, if you want to try to make an extra dollar here or there, you know, my guy knows what he's doing. That's what he's been doing for a long time. Uh, we have a good time. It's my buddy from college. And um, aside from that, my Visualize and Rise Foundation, uh, you know, we're just we're, we're making an impact in our communities. We're looking to come to New Orleans and do some, th do some more things. And, um, no, nah, I mean, that's really about it. Retirement's treating me good. I'm, I'm excited about uh, the Saints and so should the Houdet Nation. Yeah, absolutely, man. We're looking forward to your podcast, Bush and Me, and all other, you know, outside um, projects that you have going on, man. We're looking forward to hearing from you, and thank you so much for your time and, once again, being a part of the State of the Saints podcast. All good, brother. Thanks for having me on.